Good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ on this beautiful Sunday anniversary Sunday uh, as we celebrate 162 years of ministry to God and to our neighbors in Bridesburg and Port Richmond. Thank you for being here, uh, neighbors in Bridesburg, Port Richmond, and in some cases uh, far beyond. Um, also, it is World Communion Sunday. Uh, where uh, we remember our, uh, that the table of the Lord uh, ju isn't just on Fillmore Street, but it extends around the world and throughout time as well. As we join saints, uh, you know, we join saints from all over the world at, at, at the table of the Lord. Thank you for being here. Please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Jesus commanded, love one another. We come to worship the God who is love, that we might learn to love one another. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants, now I call you my friends. We come to worship the God whose friends we are through Christ. Let us sing praise to God. Let us live in love and friendship toward the human family through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first hymn is, all of our hymns are in the red hymnal. Uh, our first is number 362, God of Years. God of years, thy love hath led us. Thou hast been our bulwark strong. Wall of fire against the wicked, sword of power against the wrong. Thou hast blessed of old thy servants as they bore thy message far. We who follow in their footsteps evermore their debtors are. Onward lead, O King Eternal, lo, we heed thy high command. Bear good news to every people, far and near in every land. Thine they are, thy love doth seek them, thou wouldst bring them to the light. Lead us on till darkness brightens, on till faith is lost in sight. Lead us for the church united, strong, courageous in thy might. Lo, the fields are white with harvest, sheep to garner ere the night. One our purpose, one our leader, thus thy church shall never fall. Lead us on, O King Eternal, so shall love worldwide prevail. And let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving 
us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first scripture reading is from the, we're continuing in Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Our psalm this morning is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. We'll read responsively. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who transgress without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Our first New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, the third chapter, the end of the fourth verse through verse 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, And I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead." Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ, Jesus, has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus." 
And our gospel, uh, Matt, continuing in Matthew's gospel, the 21st chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to Jesus as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also, I will also ask you a, one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I will t also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believe him. Here end our scriptures for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. Uh, not seeing any uh, children... <laughs> Any children around today? Uh, so we will continue with, with, with our next hymn, uh, number 322, number 322. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she presses, partakes one holy food. And to one hope she presses with every grace and dude. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore, till with a vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth hath union with God, the three in one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we like them, the meek and lowly on high may dwell with thee. Please rise as you're able, and may we say we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 6 in the front of the Red Hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Um, we, we come to our time of prayer. Uh, we're going to be uh, reading the, uh, there's a, a uh, responsive prayer uh, for church anniversaries, uh, number uh, it begins at the bottom of page 549 in the, in the back of the red hymnal. Uh, but before we begin, um, any, any prayer requests? Um, we, um, uh, Barbara, uh, Barbara Schwarer um, wanted to be here, to, very much wanted to be here today. Uh, she, had, uh, she had surgery on her spine uh, on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. And she's a back brace, and she's not up to it. Uh, but she wanted to be remembered to, to everybody. So we pray for, we pray for Barbara Schwar for, uh, for uh, yeah, recovery from from her spinal surgery. We, we pray it's successful, and and she's relieved from back pain. Um, also, uh, uh, Liz Liz uh, Watts um, was having was having uh, pro- problems breathing, even even with oxygen. So. Please, uh, please uh, pray, pray for, Liz, for, for Liz Watts. Um, uh, c- continued prayers for, uh, for, for, for Sean. Um, how's, uh, how's, how's Vito doing? He's doing very well, thank you. Glad, gl- glad, glad to hear. Any uh, um, uh, other, and, and also I, I, I want to thank everybody for your prayers for me uh, these, these past two weeks. I... Uh, uh, surgery, to my knowledge, was successful. had had some speed bumps, inclu- in, including uh, in, including I was in and out of two ERs last weekend. So. <laughs> but uh, you know, so, yeah, so last yeah last weekend it was yeah <laughs> not uh, not 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 an easy weekend. But you know, I, I, I guess all's well that ends well. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm yeah you know, I'm on the I'm on the mend. I'm going back to the office uh, Monday, so. Thank you for being here today. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. It's a joy. It's a joy to be back. It's a joy to be back. Uh, being being uh, rat, rat, rattling around the house for two weeks was kind of, <laughs> get a little stir crazy. Um, any uh, other? Oh, uh, Just a continued prayer for the happy recovery of the soul of Father Kilty passed tonight. Father. Father Neil Kilty. He was now. Right, Father Neil uh, Kilty. Kilty. We will pray for him and for he. he, he was he St. Joachim or? No, he was. He was. Uh, he's uh, teaching more Catholic. Oh, that's right. Uh, other requests, uh, Gail. Uh, please continue to keep Anthony R in your prayers, and please uh, pray that Kathy makes through her health problems. Uh, Mark. Orlando's mom, Nancy Ortiz. Now, every day is my kid or miss. Some days she's good, next day she's in the wheelchair. Oh, my. We will, we will pray. Uh, Barbara. Oh, I want to pray for my grand nephew, uh, Chris. He's having some tests. They don't know what's going on with him yet, but he's, he's sick. So they don't know. We will, we will pray. Grand nephew. Okay, we will pray. Um, also, please keep in prayer. Uh, speaking of a repose of the soul, uh, Reverend uh, William Alexander. Uh, he was the supply pastor for a number of years at uh, at St. Stephen's UCC on, Prin- on Princeton Avenue. Um, his predecessor was Reverend Bill Stone, who had been supply pastor there for for many many years. And then when and uh, Reverend Alexander was was uh, a protege of Reverend of Reverend Stone, 
Uh, he passed away suddenly this past, this past week. It was, it was not expected. Uh, so please pray for uh, the repose of his soul and, and, for, uh, and, and for those, who, those, at Saint, those at St. Stephen's who knew him. Other requests? So we will we'll begin with the, uh, the responsive prayer, and then I'll, I'll end with, with the, the petitions from this morning. Uh, page 549 at the bottom. Almighty and everlasting God, we rejoice before thee in the wondrous providence that has brought us to this day. For the manifold blessings thou hast bestowed upon us, we praise thee, O Lord. For Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of the church, for his life, which is the light of the world, for his cross by which we are saved, for his resurrection whereby we know that life is eternal, for his words of truth and for his love by which the ages are redeemed, we praise thee, O Lord. For the church which our fathers established and nurtured with sacrifice and devotion, for the blessed heritage they have given to us, their children, for courageous faith, for freedom and enlightenment and the vision that sees beyond the years, we praise thee, O Lord. For the blessed company of those who have gone before us in the way of salvation. For pastors who have served their generation with devotion and vision. For men, of pi for men and women of piety and zeal who have given to the church the labors of their hearts and hands and minds. For devout and faithful men and women whose devotion to thy house has made their lives beautiful. For all the sacred and hallowed memories enshrined in this church. We praise thee, O Lord. For the congregation gathered here this day for the bond of fellowship which is ours in Christ, for the comradeship of labor and service which we enjoy in thy church, for the union of heart and mind which comes to us as we seek to do thy holy will. We praise thee, O Lord. Grant that we, thy people, may be, may be baptized anew with the cleansing fire of the Holy Spirit. Kindle in us a vision for thy righteous kingdom. Anoint us with power to do great things for thee. Stir our hearts to serve our generation with truth and love, so that thy kingdom may come and thy will be done. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We praise thee, O God, for the, eternal, for the endless renewal of life. Open our eyes to receive new light and our ears to hear the voices that are calling us to make the world new by love. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Grant that thy church may be delivered from traditions which have lost their life, from usage which has lost its spirit, from institutions which no longer give life and power to their generation, that the church may ever shine as a light in the world and be as a city set on a hill. Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. O eternal God, who did send thy Holy Spirit upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost, we pray that as thou didst strengthen their hearts with daring and fortitude, so thou wouldst confirm in us their faithful labors, their high vision, their holy purpose. Grant us so to live that the generations to come may find their memorial not alone in graven tablets, but may read it in the living record of an active faith, an unswerving loyalty to truth, a self-forgetting service of mankind. Be this the gift of thy grace bestowed upon us, be this the memorial of the just, transmitted to their children's children through the long centuries to come. And thine be the kingdom and the power and the glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. Lord, we also lift up the prayers that have been named this morning. We pray for the repose of the soul of Father Neil Kilty and of the Reverend William Alexander, uh, formerly uh, pastor of St. Stephen's United Church of Christ. Eternal rest grant them, O Lord, and light perpetual shine upon them. Be with their families, their friends, their, the, the and the faith communities uh, they served. We pray for all who are struggling with illness of body or mind. We pray for Dorothy and Nancy and Baby the Cat, for Sean, for Barbara Schwarr from uh, re recovery from spinal surgery, for Liz Watts that she may be able to breathe more, more easily and, and for restoration of her health and remission uh, from illness. We pray for Anthony R. Uh, we pray for Kathy for recovery from heart problems. We pray for Nancy Ortiz for restoration of her health. And we pray for and we pray for Barbara's uh, grand nephew Chris as he undergoes tests. We pray that the doctors may find uh, what is what what is causing 
his uh, his illness, and we pray for your restoration, for you to restore Chris to, to full health. All these and many unspoken prayers we lift before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we come to a time of announcements. I understand there's another flea market at the, yeah, at the rec. Saturday coming up at 7th. Uh, October 7th at the rec. Uh, what time is it open? They get set up at 7. Okay. 7 or 1. So, okay, so the, it's, so the morning. So there, there's that. Um, uh, we'll be having a, a re reception after after church. Uh, thank you for thank you for for, for that. Uh, also, thank you for the decoration of the of the tree. It, lo it looks it looks be it looks just beautiful. Um, and then our uh, um, on on October fifteenth, uh, the 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 the, the, con the, the conference ministers uh, they. Uh, make their cir their circuit of the churches under their care, and on October fifth, fifteenth, uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the Reverend uh, Kevin McLemore, uh, associate conference minister, will be uh, he'll be he'll be with us uh, to 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 to, uh, to preach. I'll still be here that Sunday, but uh, but he'll be, he'll be preaching. I was thinking maybe uh, may, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see. Maybe we'll go upstairs. Uh, just uh, we don't uh, you know. Don't 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 get the conference staff here very often. So, um, any any and our our auction is going to be on the Saturday after Thanksgiving in in uh, November. Any other announcements? Let us give not grudgingly or under compulsion, but with joy, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Receive, Lord, these are tithes and offerings we pray you would use them to spread your good news of salvation and to build your kingdom on earth. This we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Happy 162nd birthday, Emmanuel Church. What a joy it is to be able to celebrate having come through 162 years of serving God and our neighborhood. Our congregation was originally founded in 1861 by German immigrants at the beginning of the American Civil War. And two years after our founding, we started an orphanage for those orphaned by that Civil War, now known as Bethany Children's Home. Through the decades, Emmanuel Church has shepherded our members through epidemics, past and present, through economic dirt downturns, past and present, and through times of peace and war, past and present. Through the years, our very name, Emmanuel, proclaimed the message that God is with us, with us and through us, with our Bridesburg neighborhood. Our congregation was founded as a classic neighborhood church. Throughout much of our history, our members walked to church, and we stood ready to walk with our neighbors through the life cycle events of baptism, marriage, and death, always proclaiming Christ's presence. Our church was also largely of, G of German descent throughout much of our history. Indeed, services here were, only, were offered only in German until around World War I, when we started offering services in both German and English. We offered worship in both German and English until roughly World War II. With the advent of the automobile and modern highways and the construction of housing in Northeast Philadelphia and the suburbs, many of our members moved out of Bridesburg, but were and are still drawn back to this neighborhood, drawn back home to Bridesburg for worship. In recent years, it's been gratifying to see brothers and sisters with no connection 
no family connection to Bridesburg come to join our congregation, so we're no longer strictly a neighborhood church. Even so, we serve our Bridesburg and Port Richmond neighbors not only in worship, but as our members volunteer at the food and clothing cupboard. We've also been able to help a number of our struggling neighbors who have come here in search of food and water and clothing. Even if they have moved on as their lives have gotten back on track, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to meet people in the most desperate moments of their lives, walk with them through the valley of the shadow, and if they so choose, eventually send them on their way rejoicing. Most, most recently, before, just before COVID, we voted to become an open and affirming congregation, offering welcome without regard to race, gender, sexual orientation, or socioeconomic status. In 2020, COVID forced us to take our worship online. And even though more than a year ago, we resumed worshiping in person, of course, we still live stream our services. And the live stream services, even with their many limitations, and I, <laughs> I, I am acutely aware, uh, you know, we're, we're, our, our production values are not exactly uh, top of the line here. Uh, they, they have had, they've had two positive impacts. They've helped us to maintain connection to members and friends who, for reason of health, lack of transportation, or other challenges, aren't able to be with us most Sundays. At the same time, it's opened up a small mission field of sorts as our services are watched every week by a very small but faithful contingent of sisters and brothers spanning several continents. One of our old-timey hymns from the evangelical and reformed hymnal proclaims that we've a story to tell to the nations. And through the wonders of technology, we can tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love right here in Bridesburg, knowing that it will be heard in Haiti, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia. Maybe only by one or two people, or at best a handful of people in any one location, but by that connection, perhaps we can bless not only their lives, but the lives of those around them. The story of Emmanuel Church in broad terms is worship and ministry to an ever-expanding circle of sisters and brothers. In the beginning, our ministry was to a very defined group, German Reformed immigrants in Bridesburg. But over time, our ministry expanded, demographically and geographically. Like a small pebble thrown into a pond, the ripple effects of what we do here expand ever outward, touching an ever wider circle of people. In a broader sense, though, our ministry here itself is the ripple effect of the ministries of sisters and brothers throughout the centuries, going back to, the, to Jesus in the time of the early church. While Jesus and all of his earliest followers were Jews, the good news of salvation reached the Gentiles as well, starting with Jesus' own occasional healing missions in Gentile territory, and later the proclamation of the early disciples as described in the book of Acts, such as Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch, Peter's encounter with the Roman centurion Cornelius. And of course, after Paul's vision of Jesus on the Damascus Road, he spent the rest of his life traveling the known world of his time to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Of course, we remember that integrating Gentiles into the Christian community, into the previously all-Jewish Christian community, created all manner of friction as the new arrivals did not adhere to Jewish religious and cultural practices uh, followed by Jesus and his earliest followers. That friction between Jewish and Gentile believers echoes in our reading from Philippians. The believers at Philippi needed reassurance from Paul that they did not have to first become Jews in order to become Christians. In response, Paul wrote that if keeping kosher and other forms of observance could save, Paul had all of that, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, got a whole wardrobe full of t-shirts, but Paul said that he left all that behind, more than that, tossed it in the trash in order to follow Jesus. I'm sure that as Emmanuel's ministry expanded, there were similar tensions. While I haven't read our church's records on the subject, and I, that's, that's really ought to be a homework assignment of mine, I know that in other German Reformed congregations, the, introduc the introduction of worship in English was a very emotional topic. I, I remember one of our other pastors, the former pastor of, of St. James Havertown, telling us, uh, 
telling us a story that a congregation was debating offering services in, in, in English, and one of the church elders stood up and said, you know, I, when, when, I, when I read my Bible, God speaks to me, and when I read my Bible and God speaks to me, God speaks to me in German. <laughs> and, that, and, and that argument carried the day. <laughs> Uh, and, and so it was very, it was, you know, it was, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure it was an emotional thing here, too. I, I do know that we were probably one of the last churches, uh, one, of the, one of the later German Reformed churches to add English services. Uh, uh, many, of the, many of the churches were worshiping in, in English, you know, 70, 80 years before, before we started. I do know for a fact that starting the food and clothing cupboard at, at the Methodist Church was also a very emotional topic for the neighborhood. I remember a small group of neighbors coming right here, right in the, right in the Sunday school room area there, uh, to, to talk to me, to discourage me from supporting the cupboard. Of course, I politely told them that as a matter of faith, I, I had to support the cupboard. As a pastor, as a, as a, as a person of faith, uh, you know, the, supporting the cupboard was what I had to do. As, I celebrate our, as we celebrate our anniversary in mainline Protestant churches, today is also World Communion Sunday. World Communion Sunday began in 1936 under Presbyterian auspices, but was adopted by what would become the National Council of Churches uh, by, by the early 40s, and became a way to widen the circle of Christian fellowship by symbolically joining with Christians of many traditions at the table of the Lord. As we come forward later in the service for our piece of bread and our sip of grape juice on this World Communion Sunday, we are reminded that when we approach the Lord's table, we approach a table that, in a spiritual sense, extends around the globe as we join believers of every race and nationality and socioeconomic status, join Christians who worship in cathedrals and Christians who worship in storefront churches, and Christians who worship in tents and open fields, in eating bread and drinking wine in memory of Jesus, and sharing the body and blood of Christ, br broken and poured out for us. At various locations of this great table, some believers are eating pita bread, and some are eating rye bread, and some are eating pumpernickel bread, while some are eating the wafers used in Catholic and Anglican churches. And yet, in a spiritual sense, all these different kinds of bread are part of the one celebration of the Lord's Supper. To me, it's striking that in the, in the midst of the Great Depression, with such, such widespread suffering, the Presbyterian Church conceived the idea of a day for all Christians to celebrate communion, to gather at the table. And it's even more striking that with World War II as a backdrop, the National Council of Churches adopted and promoted World Communion Sunday. Amid hunger and conflict, the world responded to God's call in a way that seems, on the surface, impractical. What did, you know, on the surface, what difference can we make by, 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 eating, by eating a little bit of bread and drinking a little bit of wine or grape juice together? But from a Christian perspective, it is, it is compelling. After we've broken bread with someone at the Lord's table, it's much more difficult to turn them away hungry from our own table isn't it? After we've broken bread with someone at the Lord's table, making a war and bombing that person's home and family is no longer an abstraction, but the annihilation of a human being with a face and a name and an eternal soul, a child of God like ourselves. The conception and promotion of World Communion Sunday in that troubled time then can be seen not just as a sentimental gesture, but as a prophetic act, pointing beyond the alarms of the day to the beloved community to which God calls us all. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, Beloved, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul pressed on, proclaiming the gospel to an ever-widening circle of believers. Christians throughout history have done the same. The National Council of Churches, in proclaiming World Communion Sunday, pressed on to Proclaim the unity of believers against a backdrop of division and poverty and war. We here at Emmanuel are likewise called in our small way to press on in proclaiming the good news of Jesus. We are like a small pebble tossed into a vast sea, but even so that small pebble can create ripples. 
As tiny as we are, God can use what we do here to embrace our neighborhood and our world in an ever-widening circle. May we continue to press on in widening the circle of love. And again, happy 162nd anniversary, Emmanuel Church. Amen. Please join me in praying as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 324, Christ has made the sure foundation. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, Binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever and her confidence alone. To this temple where we call thee, come, O Lord of hosts, today. With thy wonted loving kindness, Hear thy people as they pray, and thy fullest benediction shed within its walls alway. Here vouchsafe to all thy servants what they <laughs> ask of thee to gain, what they gain from thee forever with the blessed to retain and hereafter in thy glory evermore with thee to reign lord and honor to the father lord and honor to the son lord and honor to the spirit ever three and ever one one in might and one in glory <coughs> unending ages run our service continues with the alternate service for holy communion found on page 32 our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, instituted the Holy Communion of his body and blood, that it might be the abiding memorial of his atoning death, the seal of his perpetual presence in the church through the Holy Spirit, the mystical representation of the sacrifice of himself on the cross, the pledge of his undying love for his people, and the bond of his living union and fellowship with them to the end of time. The celebration of the Lord's Supper has ever been regarded by the church as the innermost sanctuary of the whole Christian worship. We enter here into living communion with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and do show forth our fellowship with one another as members of his church. Gathering about his table, we profess our desire to be numbered among his people and to walk in his ways. You then who have earnestly searched your own hearts and desire to forsake all sin and follow after Christian holiness. Approach with me now to the throne of grace, and let us make our humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins, which we have committed against Thee by thought and word and deed, and by which we have offended against Thy holy laws, and have merited Thy condemnation in this world and in the world to come. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our transgressions, trusting in thy grace and goodness manifested in Christ Jesus our Lord. We ask of thee pardon and peace and strength to lead a new and righteous life by the power of thy Holy Spirit, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God, promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. <coughs> 
If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Holy Lord, Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with the whole company of thy people, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full, are full of the majesty of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he is betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy great goodness didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death for our redemption. Wherefore, having in remembrance his holy life, his suffering and death, we thy servants do set forth this memorial which he has commanded us to make. And we beseech thee, O merciful Father, to send thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these elements of bread and wine that the bread which we break may be to us the communion of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing which we bless the communion of the blood of Christ. We beseech to, thee to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, together with the sacrifice of ourselves unto thee and to thy holy service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, for thee we live, for thee we suffer, for thee we die. Thine will we be in life and in death. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. Emmanuel United Church of Christ celebrates an open communion. This is not our table, but it is the table of the Lord, and all seeking a closer relationship with Jesus Christ are welcome at the table. Come, for all things are now ready. And if you can just line, line up across the front as best you can. If, if you can't come forward, I'll come to you. Either way, we will, get, we will find you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of him. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of him. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of him. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. 
Take, eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. Take, drink. This cup is the new covenant in the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is poured out for you for the remission of sin. Do this in remembrance of him. Take, drink. This cup is the new covenant in the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is poured out for you for the remission of sin. Do this in remembrance of him. Take, drink. This cup is the new covenant in the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is poured out for you for the remission of sin. Do this in remembrance of him. Take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is poured out for you for the remission of sin. Do this in remembrance of him. May the holy communion of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep, bless, and preserve you, each one, in body, soul, and spirit, unto everlasting life. Amen. Depart in peace. And our service continues with the prayer of thanksgiving found on page 36. Let us give thanks. Almighty God, we thank thee for thy great mercy given to us in this sacrament, whereby we are made partakers of Christ and all his benefits. So enrich us by the Holy Spirit that the life of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal body and all our days may be spent in thy love and service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, before I give the benediction, I forgot uh, one announcement I forgot to make. I went to see uh, Joan O'Meara. Uh, before the, the Sunday before I uh, went in for surgery, uh, she she seemed to be in good in, in relatively good spirits. She wanted to be remembered to everybody, um, and uh, so I, I just wanted to you know and, and please keep please keep Joan in your in, in your prayers as as well. Um, she she wanted to be remembered. Go forth in this place to love and serve the Lord. Go forth in this place in peace to love and serve all to whom God calls us in service. Go forth pressing on to expand the circle of God's love through the saving work of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. As we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and go with us each one now and evermore. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, our final hymn, number 72 in the... Red, which is found on the opposing page. So now thank we all our God, number 72. So it'll be four times through total, three times in English, once, once German. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Who wondrous things hath done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near 
us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us to keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next all praise and thanks to god the father now be given the son and him who reigns with them in highest heaven the one eternal god whom earth and heaven adore for thus it was is now and shall be evermore off deutsch nun danke alle gott mit herzen mund und händen der große dinge tut an uns und allen enden der uns von mutterleib und kindes beinen an und selig will so gut dies er ihr herz getan 